this meeting to order. Madam Clerk. Where's our Madam Clerk? Um, she was moving the sign. Yep. All right. Dr. Benson, would you call the roll for us, please? <laughs> Can I? Yeah. You're allowed to do that, Dr. Benson. <laughs> we're, we're, we're delegating. Because our he clerk left us. There is the clerk. Here we Super clerk's gone our way. <laughs> there she is. We're ready. We've called it to order. Okay. Dr. Chase? Here. Ms. Decatur? Here. Ms. Egan? Here. Ms. Hazard? Here. Ms. Healy? Here. Mr. McCosker? Here. Ms. Young? Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance uh, and the Color Guard presentation by the Mountain View High School Marine Corps National Defense Cadet Corps? We'd like to thank tonight's Color Guard cadets, James Russ, Jesse Scott, Joseph Smoot, Mark Yaconi, and Roselle Lamont. The instructors of the program at Mountain View High School are Lieutenant Colonel Richard Barnes and Sergeant Major Alan Tanner. Thank you for being with us this evening. That brings us to appro uh, approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion for the agenda, Ms. Egan? Um, I would like to motion to approve the agenda with um, an addition. I would like to add um, specific member comments um, after citizen comments, before superintendent's comments to address recent um, issues within our community. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? second. The Mendez agenda. Motion by Ms. Egan, second by Mr. Cater. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to awards. The first uh, award we're going to ask uh, Mrs. Hawk, the principal of Brook Point High School, to join us. Jamie? Or Irene? Both of you can. Oh, if you want. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Benson. Out of thousands of students who auditioned nationwide, Brook Point High School senior Jake Grimsley was selected to participate on tenors for the 2017 Great American Marching Band as part of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. As one of the 185 student musicians who received this honor, Jake demonstrates his pursuit of excellence, his discipline, and his dedication to the marching arts and music. Please join us in honoring Mr. Jake Grimsley. Thank you. Um, next, we'd like to invite uh, Mr. Daniel Hornick, principal of North Stafford High School. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Benson. 
It is my pleasure to announce this young lady beside me, Alexandra Link, Leak, as a Harry F. Byrd Jr. Leadership Scholar. Former Senator Byrd established the Leadership Award Program because of his deep conviction that a strong system of public education is essential to democratic government and that cultivating leadership among young citizens advances both education and government. It was Senator Byrd's hope that this award would accomplish the following, creating a desire for excellence among our students, enhancing self-assurance by the selection committee's vote of confidence, and providing recognition and financial assistance to students with outstanding leadership qualities. The first awards took place in the spring of 1995. Each award winner, one from each of Virginia's 11 congressional districts, receives $10,000. Although it was Senator Byrd's hope that these talented young folks would remain within the Commonwealth for their higher education, this is not a requirement and there's no restriction on the use. To date, there have been only 187 recipients of the Harry F. Byrd Leadership Award. Then the University of Virginia Foundation administers the trust. It is our extreme pleasure to introduce to you our own recipient of the Harry Byrd Leadership Award, inducting her into a very esteemed group of individuals few who have even been seen from our area. We know Alexandra Leake represents the very best of North Stafford High School and will continue to thrive as a Harry Bird Leadership Scholar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we want to invite Dr. James Stemple, Principal of Mountain View High School, with his team. My computer's not working. While this team comes forward, Madam Chair, School Board members, Dr. Benson, it gives me great pleasure to bring to you for the second consecutive year the Virginia High School League Group 5A Field Hockey Champions back to back. This team won the second straight championship, but unlike last year's team that peaked towards the end of the season to make a run to the state championship, this team dominated from beginning to end. This team finished with a perfect 24-0 record for the second time in Mountain View history. A team has finished undefeated. I just have to share with you a few statistics. For the year, they scored 111 goals and only allowed a total of nine goals to be scored against them. Let me repeat, they scored 111 and only allowed nine goals to be scored. They were Commonwealth District Champions, 5D West Region Champion, as well as back-to-back -back state. During the regional tournament, they scored 13 goals, did not allow a goal. And during the state tournament, they scored an amazing 15 goals and did not allow a single goal. Ladies and gentlemen, that's total domination from this field hockey team. In addition, Coach Kimmy Solomon was named the 5A Coach of the Year in Virginia. Senior, senior Madison Cookie Hatcher was named the 5A Player of the Year in Virginia. And also named All-State was McKenzie Prophet, Maggie Hubert, Maddie Hyatt, Madison Hatcher, and McKenzie Rivero. I'm going to announce the entire team. Hold your applause just for a second. Kendall Cook, you can wave if you want. <laughs> She's a freshman, we gotta tell her how to do this. Maggie Hubert, Maddie Hyatt, Mackenzie Prophet, Madison Hatcher, Lily Stewart, Jordan Brzezinski, Michelle Snow, Izzy Atchison, Sierra White, Lizzie Ranberger, Madison LaRoe, Charlotte Mulder, Simone Tapp, Mackenzie Rivero, Liz Britton, Sam Gilbert, Daniel Gallas and Kenna Roberts, Kenna Roberts, and our coaches, head coach, coach of the year, Kimmy Sullivan, assisted by Deb Hamilton, Christina Fallon, and Sarah Rangel. Congratulations to this team. Squeeze in. 
squeeze in. You guys are experts at making these pictures of winners. Like <laughs> sure. <laughs> Rings, all the stuff. See? You guys can do this. You guys got to squeeze that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> We've been waiting a long time to see these ladies, and so it's a pleasure. Um, next, we'd like to invite Ms. Catherine Massey, the director of Stafford's Head Start program. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Benson. Stafford Head Start and the Stafford School Nurses would like to thank Rose Burris and her colleagues at the Stafford County Lions Club for all their help and time dedicated to getting our children's vision and hearing screenings completed. They use the Spot Pedia Vision machines, which are very accurate, screening 6,210 Stafford students in four high schools, seven middle schools, and all 17 elementary schools, as well as Head Start. They also screen 480 students for hearing. In addition, the Stafford County Lions Club screened students at private schools in the county, the Ron Rosner YMCA, the Massad YMCA, and the Garrison Woods Community Center. The Stafford School Board thanks the Stafford County Lions Club for their commitment to our children and their invaluable assistance their organization provides for our school nurses. Thank you. And our school, our school nurses would like to thank you too. <laughs> we could get the whole Mountain View field hockey team in. We could certainly get you all in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. And the, the, the school board is looking forward to visiting uh, Head Start on March 12th, I believe. We're going to be serving dinner. Uh, along with the Stafford County Board of Supervisors for the, the Head Start uh, students and their families. So we're, we'll, we'll see you then, Mrs. Massey, if not before. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the end of the awards. We congratulate everyone who was here this evening and appreciate everything you do for our schools. Um, that brings us to the proclamations. The first proclamation is Social Work Appreciation Month. Mrs. Decatur, would you uh, read that for us, please? I will. Oh, my microphone's already on again. <laughs> Whereas, March is recognized nationally as Social Work Month and is an opportunity to recognize the work performed by our dedicated and experienced school social workers and whereas our school social workers strive diligently to provide students and families with basic needs such as food, clothing, financial assistance, mental health services, and medical services. Their work is often done behind the scenes and is confidential in nature, but is always approached with the intent of recognizing the strengths and potential of the children and families they serve. And whereas school social workers also assist school personnel and families in social and emotional support, prevention and intervention services, assessment and identification, counseling services and crisis intervention, consultation, collaboration and advocacy, family and community services, promotion of educational equity and reducing barriers to learning and now therefore be it proclaimed by the school board that March 2018 is hereby designated as, school, uh, as social work appreciation month 
adopted by the Stafford County School Board this 27th day of February 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Decatur. <laughs> Clap for our social workers. The next proclamation is Music in Our Schools Month, Youth Art Month, and Theater in Our Schools Month. And Ms. Hazard, would you read that proclamation for us, please? I would be happy to. And for the ears of all those that are here, I will not sing the proclamation so that you all are um, going to be able to walk out that way. But this is one of my favorite committees, as most people know. Whereas arts education, dance, music, theater arts, and visual arts enrich the lives of countless people through arts programs in our schools and acknowledges the arts as a powerful tool to unlock the potential of the whole child. And whereas arts education is a critical component of the learning process and develops students' creativity, self-discipline, and critical thinking abilities. And whereas research indicates that students with more arts education have higher academic achievement across the curriculum. And whereas the importance of arts education is recognized as being necessary for the full development of all children. And whereas Music in Our Schools Month, Youth Art Month, and Theater in Our Schools Month are special opportunities for our community to engage in the ongoing process of arts education and bring a heightened awareness of the importance of the arts in education. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the school board that March 2018 is hereby designated as Music in Our Schools Month, Youth Art Month and Theater in Our Schools Month. The school board takes this opportunity to urge all citizens to take an interest in and give full support to the unique contributions that qualify school arts education programs provide for our children. Adopted this 27th day of February 2018. And there are, a little aside, many programs coming up some begin actually next week, so make sure you go to your schools. There are a lot of um, production programs beginning in the next two weeks. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. <laughs> um, that brings us to citizen comments. If the board has no objection, I would like to ask Dr. Benson to give us an update on uh, security here at Stafford County Public Schools before we, we have the public comments. Is that... Um, any objection to that? Yeah. No, hearing none. Dr. Benson, and this this is independent from your superintendent comments, so you still get your turn later. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and let me just um, start by saying our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, everyone that experienced a loss of life in Parkland, Florida. Just a terrible, tragic um, event. I, you know, I want to ensure that, that folks understand in our community that uh, student safety is our top priority. It, it's always a top priority. Uh, I think it's very difficult for us to accomplish the things that we set out in terms of student achievement, being prepared for workforce, further education, to be good citizens with, without our young people feeling, feeling safe in school, and for our parents and guardians to know that their children are safe in, in our schools. We, um, it, it, you know, this is very much a partnership, and it's a community effort when you talk about uh, securing our, our facilities. I, I don't have my glasses on, but I think Ms. Baumke's out there. Uh, chair from supervisors, Mr. Cavaliers back there, I think as well, and Mr. Cohen, I think yes. So uh, we very much appreciate the support that we um, receive, uh, particularly in terms of our partnership with the sheriff's office. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but uh, we very much value our school resource officers and the presence that they have in our buildings. Not just when when there are issues that need to be dealt with, but because they're part of our school community, and our our students develop very positive relationships with them and. That's an important thing when it comes to uh, being able to feel like you can tell somebody there might be something that is, is making you a little bit uneasy or something that's out of the ordinary that should be, should be reported. I would like to note that I think our schools are, are in front of a fair number of other uh, schools across the Commonwealth. We've got a couple of pretty significant initiatives that the board has undertaken over the years to enhance security in our buildings, one of, one of which is to ensure that we have a secure vestibule in every one of our facilities. So it's not one door and you're into the building, it's one door and then you're into another door in order to get into the office before you can get into the, to the building. That's a significant enhancement. The other thing is that we 
we, we have implemented the AFone um, model across the division as a whole, which requires you to get buzzed into the building after you've had an ID uh, check, as well as um, uh, key cards for all of our uh, all of our employees. So those are some pretty significant um, um, initiatives that, that we have executed across the division as a whole. We've also put uh, panic buttons into our, our schools, so a, a one button uh, alert to a call center, which then uh, will contact a 911. And then as a backup, we also have uh, radios that we've placed in all of our schools that, that have a direct connection to the 911 call center. So there's, uh, there are multiple layers there that would help us with um, with our commun communication. Um, but I do want to come back to the importance of, of community. Uh, it is really important that we take care of each other and that we understand that we each have a responsibility in, in doing that, particularly when it comes to our young people in our school settings. Because quite frankly, a lot of times they might have some idea or clue as to you know something not being exactly right that needs to, to be reported to an adult such that we can take an appropriate um, look and investigation to figure out what it, you know what might be going on there. That, that, that notion that if you um, see something, you should say something. Uh, we want all of our young folks in our schools to, in, to embrace that and understand that, that, that they also have a responsibility in helping us maintain a safe school uh, environment. So, um, we, and we appreciate uh, the folks that do that. And we do see that pretty consistently across the organization um, as a whole. Th there are always things that we could do, I think, to enhance security. And, and that's part of the dialogue that we'll be having in the coming weeks. I will tell you that at the top of um, my list would be for us to have a full-time sheriff's deputy in each one of our schools, a school resource officer in each one of our schools. I think there's something to be said about that partnership with law enforcement and having that presence on a daily basis that uh, sends a, a pretty significant message to, to anybody that might have a notion that they would want to do something um, harmful to, to any of our staff or, um, or students. So um, I'm going to conclude there, uh, Ms. Healy. I, I, I know that this is a continued dialogue. Uh, we're, we're actually uh, having a meeting tomorrow morning, the, the chair and vice chair of the school board and the board of supervisors to talk more about what we could do to enhance security in the division. And, and I look forward to uh, seeing what those next steps might be. Thank you, Dr. Benson. And I would like to also thank the Board of Supervisors. Mrs. Baumke um, raised a number of questions, um, you know, with respect to security, among which was what what would we need to to enhance the security here. So we will be responding to those those questions. And, and thank you for your your partnership as well as, as Dr. Benson said. And, and certainly the the sheriff's office is, um, is is such a godsend to us. You know, as as a school system, as a as a county, um, that brings us to citizen comments. We have um, eight people who signed up. I'm going to call the first four names, and I'm going to read the little blurb about you have three minutes and um, the rest of the rules. But um, while I'm doing that, if these first four want to to line up, um, Heba Soliman, Kaylee Kroffman, Sophie Capra, and Jacqueline Capra. After that, we have uh, four more, and anyone else uh, who wants to address the board can, can come forward. Um, individuals wishing to comment may <clears throat> do so by responding to the general invitation of the chairman. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose slash topic of their comments. Three minutes shall be allotted to speakers. The chairman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or which threatens imminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairman. Although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment, individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division program services or activities may also utilize procedures outlined in Stafford County Public School Policy 1113 public complaints. Thank you. Um, Ms. Solomon, we'll start with you. Thank you for working towards safer schools, and I want to start out by acknowledging what you said before I came up. My name is Heba Solomon. I currently attend Stafford High School, and I'm in the 11th grade. Following the incident that happened in Florida and many before that, it got a lot of students, families, and I very nervous. 
We believe that in order to make our schools more secure, we must have a conversation and further, and further ensure the safety of our students. Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Douglas are only a few of the school shootings that have occurred over the past years. How many more have to occur before we finally step up and do something about it? According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 400 people shot in over 200 school shootings, 138 of whom have been killed. We need more security guards. We need more security cameras. We need stronger consequences for the people who make threats towards the schools as a joke. Teachers and staff need to teach social and emotional skills to young people and learn how to control their emotions, recognize others' feelings, and to negotiate. Think about if this was your child. If your child was killed by any type of weapon, what would you do then? Public school is the one place that every student thought would be the safest place to go. At this point, it could possibly be one of the scariest. The shooting in Parkland is the 18th incident in which a gun has been discharged on a school campus in the US this year, according to Gun Safety Nonprofit. This has to end now. We're the only people that can do anything about this, so why wait and wait for the next child, the next staff member, or the next teenager to get hurt? I'm not asking for anything unreasonable. I'm asking to feel safe. I'm asking that Stafford County protects us. I'm demanding protection. I'm demanding that when we step into a school environment, we are in good hands by the right people. I want to make sure that what happened two weeks ago never happens again. I respect the thoughts and prayers that come right after the shootings happen, but thoughts and prayers are not changing anything. We need change. We need a different routine. In the last week, we recently made a petition that expressed the same views and points I'm sharing with you now and asked friends and family to share it. Over 300 people and counting signed and agreed that change needs to happen. Each day, the numbers of our, of our supporters are growing as our community unites in attempt to stop school violence. I'm up here today speaking to you all because I'm shocked at what this nation has become. I know Stafford County School Board cannot do anything about this nationally, but we can start here in our hometown, protecting Stafford County students, staff, and families. Please take what I've said into consideration. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And if you'd like to hand your comments in to our clerk, they can be made part of the record. It's your choice. Kaylee Kaufman. Um, okay. Hello, my name is Kaylee Kerfman. I currently attend Stafford High School and I am in the 12th grade. I'd also like to acknowledge what you said and thank you for saying that. Um, okay, so obviously there have been a lot of school shootings in the past and I know that it's mandatory that we have one fire drill every week for the first month of school and then it moves to once a month after that but we only have about like two lockdown drills during the whole school year and I was just wondering like why because according to USA Today there have been 25 fatal school shootings since Columbine so in the past 19 years and if you look at how many people have died in school fires since then you can't really find any numbers the last um, major school fire with more than 10 deaths was in 1937. And the last major school shooting with more than 10 deaths was in 2018. And so one way the students and administrators thought that we could maybe help with this, I guess, is um, more lockdown drills. And I don't really think that's unreasonable. And I feel like if it's mandatory, then we have to, because I know sometimes lockdown drills get moved around, they have in the past. And about two years ago, when I was in 10th grade at my school, there was a lockdown call that was on accident at 2.13 in the afternoon, and nobody really knew what to do. And my teacher was new to the school and wasn't really familiar with what to even do during a lockdown, and it was pretty late in the year. So I think we need to address this more, and more conversations need to happen. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if you'd like to submit your comments, you're welcome to as well. Any, anyone can submit your comments. It's not a requirement, but they do become part of our, our record for, for our meetings. Um, next is Sophie Capra. Uh, hello, my name is Sophie Capra. I'm an 11th grader at Stafford High School. Um, I'm here today not just as a 17-year-old girl, but as a fellow Stafford School student, as a concerned citizen, and most importantly, an ally. Especially in today's climate, it is growing increasingly important to keep on improving our schools. 
I'm here to show you a student's perspective on things, to present you with a vital issue that needs to be addressed, and hopefully to come to a solution. According to Mental Health America, the nation's leading community-based nonprofit dedicated to addressing the needs of those living with mental illness, rates of youth with severe depression in America increased from 5.9% in 2012 to 8.2% in 2015. In addition, 76% of youth are left with no or insufficient treatment, even with severe depression. Keeping in mind that Virginia students on average spend 6.62 hours a day and 181 days a year in school, according to the National Center for Education Statistics, it is becoming increasingly vital for our public schools to keep up with those rates and provide adequate resources for our students. School is supposed to be a resource in our lives that teaches students how to handle responsibility, work with others, and prepare them for the world. So how can we as a school system confidently claim we are doing that if we don't teach our youth how to handle stress and mental illness? The conversation needs to start here and it needs to start now. Referring a struggling student to their counselor should not be the only solution, but an additional resource. Starting support groups, educating our staff on warning signs, or even simply hanging suicide prevention posters in our schools will help reduce the stigma around mental health and make students feel safer. There are never too many resources for our students. I implore you not to just consider solutions, but to put words into actions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Jacqueline Capra is the next speaker, and after Ms. Capra, Sandra Morofsky, Lily Hoyt, and Roxanne Allegreth. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Jackie Capra, and I'm currently a junior attending Stafford High School. I would like to begin by thanking you for listening to the comments and concerns of my fellow classmates. I am here to reiterate the main points spoken before me. These points include needing to take every security measure possible, more security cameras and more resource officers. We need to have a plan for when students are outside for classes like PE, JRTC, etc. Since the Parkland shooting, I have spoken to staff and students alike, and I have, and not one has, was able to answer this question clearly. What do we do if there's a lockdown during lunch, during classroom changes? The lack of a straight answer is both chilling and worrisome. Although it is difficult to prepare for these circumstances, there is not an inconvenience great enough that is worth losing a life. Next, we must keep with, up with the growing mental issues in, the, in minors today. While we have resources like counselors, all students and adults must be educated on the subject and knowledgeable on these resources available. Students need to know that Stafford County cares. We need to feel safe in the place we spend the majority of our week. Lastly, I would like to make it clear that this is not about politics. This is about keeping our students safe. This is about protecting the families in Stafford County. We are aware that you have be begun taking, taking steps and are very grateful for this. Thank you for your time and I urge you to take action. Ms. Borowski. Good evening, Dr. Benson, Chairman Haley, and board members. Um, my name is Sandra Morofsky. I live at 508 Glen Eagle Drive in the Falmouth District. I'm a native, one of the few that are left. Um, I would like to uh, let you know that uh, my children attended Stafford County Schools a few years ago, and I'm here tonight to speak uh, about starting a program in our county high schools. The program is called Students Against Disruptive Decisions, also known as SAD. I've researched the internet, and as of this date, the Commonwealth of Virginia does not have a chapter for this program. And it's an after-school program. It's run by the students and a staff member at the school. I have a handout that I will give to your clerk with more information regarding that. Uh, I'd just like to give you a little bit of information about me. I volunteered 
with the bereavement department with this uh, Mary Washington Hospice for 15 years. And we developed programs and held support groups for families that had lost spouses, parents, and children. And I felt it was an honor and a privilege to be part of that. And while I feel that I brought some help to those folks, never did I know that I would be so impacted by it. The impact was the loss of my teenage grandson in June 2017. We had not a clue. And um, the high school that he attended in Florida has started a sad chapter. And the night that they had a walk out of the darkness, they had 175 students to sign up for this. Um, I can't sit back and watch nothing take place. And I'm willing to do whatever I can to get this going. Um, I think it's much easier for students to talk to students than it is an adult. And uh, I know from my experience that if they say Susie said so and so, it could be the same thing mom and dad said, but it had more impact if Susie said it. Um, and as if, if you could wrap up, I'm sorry. That's okay. Dr. Chase knows that the brain is not fully developed until we're in our 20s, and they suffer the consequences without being able to understand them. Um, I have a lady with me, Tara Hoyt, who is a student at Brook Point, and she is going to tell you what she has uh, started as a pilot program for this. Thank you. And thank you for bringing us the materials. We appreciate it. All right. Hello, I'm Lily Hoyt, and I'm a student at Brook Point High School. I'm a sophomore. Um, I am very interested in starting the SAD program in my school, and I'm willing to help students get connected and in light of what has happened the last, in the last two weeks, um, I feel like mental health issues could really be solved by the SAD problem, SAD program, sorry. And um, I would like to start it at my school because they don't have any in Virginia right now. And I would like to, I would like to, like, sorry. I would like to get students together and make progress happen with keeping students safe and connected because isolated students can cause, it's a danger to themselves and others. So if, if there's no stigma behind mental illness, then it'll be easier for students to get help and for the school to be a safer place. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Lily? Irene here. I'm your school board member. Please call me. I, I, want, I want to help you with this, especially at Brook Point, okay? Thanks. And af after the next speaker, uh, if anyone else would like to address the board, uh, please just line up on either side and then you come down. Um, anyone after Miss Allegreth? Allegretti. Oh my gosh, what was that again? Allegretti. Allegretti. Yeah. All right. I apologize. Okay. Um, we'll have to sign in after if you if you come forward to speak, <coughs> and the sign up sheet is there, and we ask that you sign in after you give your comments. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Roxanne Allegretti. I'm a local pediatrician. I have a daughter at Brook Point, and one who's a graduate of Brook Point. And I just want to say first, I'm so impressed with the young people speaking tonight. So nice to see them taking action and things that they care about, and that's what I'm here to talk about. 
There have been um, several things in social media of different kinds of events being organized, walking out from schools in protest. And the upcoming one that's the soonest is March 14th. I'm not sure if you're all aware of it, but there was um, a program that's been organized by the Women's March, the women who did the march in D.C. in January of this year and last year. And it's their group called Youth Empower, which is calling for students, teachers, and allies to take part in a national school walkout for 17 minutes at 10 a.m. on March 14th. So that's exactly one month after the Parkland shooting. Um, and I would like to ask that the Stafford County School Board support this opportunity for our kids to take part in a peaceful demonstration, which both memorializes the Parkland shooting victims and creates a call for action. I believe that this is a tipping point in our society right now in which real change is possible so many people are involved and the snowball is going and we need to keep it rolling. I would really like for our kids to be able to get involved as the Parkland kids have and feel empowered in making a change, not just sending thoughts and prayers, but taking action. Participation in this walkout will take away maybe 20 minutes from school time, but will enrich these kids greatly in empowerment and education in how to bring about change in a democracy. I personally have been worried with social media that a lot of our kids don't know how to speak in front of people, don't know how to talk about important issues, and I've been very impressed by how much skill they actually have in this, and I think we need to encourage it. I'd like to make sure that kids who want to participate in this walkout will not be penalized for this action by their teachers or administrators. And I think this kind of civil unrest is the only thing that's ever created true change in this country, and we need to make sure that they understand that and make progress in that area. Thank you. Mr. Hayes, are you in line? Oh, you can Hi. Be next. <laughs> My name is Lindsay Ross. I have a daughter at Gale Middle School, and I have a poem that I wrote this week, and this is the first time I've ever written anything. This time. This time I didn't want you to go. I knew there was danger. I looked in those eyes and knew you didn't want to stay. I let you go. I knew I shouldn't, but I didn't listen. This time, us moms threw a get-together to comfort each other. We all couldn't focus. Their kids were not at school, and mine was. I would flinch every time my phone would light up. I apologized for being stressed with worry. I was yards away from school, just in case. This time, my phone lit up with a text from the school. I ran on foot towards danger as fast as I could. I wasn't late, but the first parent there. I couldn't breathe and I didn't know what to do. I was a useless mother. I had to trust men with guns and dogs to protect my baby. All I could do was watch and be there. This time I saw parents speeding into the school parking lot. They were there in the middle of the day. I watched as they got out of their cars and stopped in front of them. Their faces were masked by shame and worry. We all waited in silence and didn't look at our phones. My friend called with sadness in her voice and told me there was a gun inside. This time I saw parents speak to police and saw their faces change. They smiled through tears and said, they're okay. I hugged parents I didn't know. I walked with them to join many. There was a line to pick up our children with police at the doors. <clears throat> there had been an active online threat for five days. We were angry at them because we thought they knew what to do. We thought they were taking all the precautions to avoid this. This time we showed our IDs without complaining. We proudly said our child's name. When we saw our child, we hugged them and wouldn't let them go. We walked out of the doors like it wasn't an errand. They were alive and nothing else mattered. This time heaven didn't gain 17 angels. It was an airsoft gun. He showed it to others. Kids spoke up. All the procedures worked. We were wrong to worry, but oh so right. We failed. Could have been so much worse. This time will we listen? Will the threat have been enough? Will we do what we can to keep them safe no matter the cost? Will we be at the PTA meetings and bake sales? Will you volunteer more to help? Will we reach out and go the extra mile for a sad kid? Will we be more present for them? Will we try harder to protect them? Will we fight evil with kindness? I believe we can. This time was a blessing. We were protected by an angel of mercy. We could learn something from our mistakes. We could try harder. Should be the last time. Should be the worst. 
I have hope for change. They matter more than anything. This time I've had enough. I expect more from myself. I expect more from you. I expect more from my child. I will be the change. I will be that mom. This time I'm going to do all that I can to make sure there's not a next time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Good evening, Madam Chair, fellow school board members, Dr. Benson. I'd like to um, just uh, make a comment on a couple different things. One is the, one of the previous uh, speakers um, just mentioned the walkout among uh, the March for, the, for uh, Nonviolence. Um, teachers are reaching out to the SCA. I'm sorry, my name is Andy Hayes. I'm president of the uh, Stafford, Student, or Stafford Education Association. Uh, teachers are reaching out to our association asking for direction. And we want to support, but we don't have any direction at this time because there's just, it's, it's an ongoing development. So we would appreciate any direction that the board and superintendent can give us to support the students and the schools and do so in an appropriate way that encourages um, freedom of speech and that encourages uh, less violence in our schools. Um, the other thing I want to just mention is that at the, at the uh, work session tonight, tonight you're considering passing um, Dr. Benson's budget so that he can present it or you can present it next week at the, school, at the uh, Board of Supervisors. I just want to mention a couple thoughts that I have. One is I, I do think uh, one, uh, uh, one of you mentioned that maybe it would be a good idea to wait and uh, vote on it next week before you present it. I think that would be wise. Um, teachers, school employees, if we can do anything, we want to support your budget fully. We want to go together as a, as a united group. We want a fully funded budget. We can argue and, and debate about the particulars, but we want to go together. Teachers, school employees, they are so intelligent, but they need to have that. They want to see the numbers. They want to see it in front of them. So when I was in that um, work session, if it was in front of me, I would be, feel a lot at, more at ease. So tonight, I encourage you as the SCA president to maybe put off the, the uh, approval of the budget till maybe Monday, as you discussed, and then present it, but give a few days or more for uh, your school employees to look over the budget and your constituents too. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Amanda Hamilton. Um, we've uh, recent, we are recently moved to Stafford County. This is our first year with, with your schools. Um, we came from DOD, so uh, we were up on base uh, in Quantico. Um, I wanted to say that change is great, uh, change is encouraged, but uh, without, um, without proper instruction, uh, the policies that you have in place now are not necessarily being followed. Um, I'll just give a brief example. Friday, I took my eldest daughter to school. I kept her home all week. And we went in to get her schoolwork. And it was at the end of the day, and the buses had left the um, school, but there were still students inside. And I think there was a basketball game or there were students that were being called to buses for a basketball game or something of the sort. We went up to the school and I fully expected to show my ID and I was buzzed right into the school. And that's a major problem. Uh, so when we got into the school, uh, my youngest son, while she went to go get her her, um, her work, my youngest son had to use the restroom, so they said, oh, it's around the corner, but nobody 
followed us to see where we were going or made sure that we were, and they still at that point had not checked my ID. So they had no idea who I was. Now I understand I was a mom and I was there with, with children, but that shouldn't matter. Everybody who comes through those doors should have their ID checked, even if they know them. They don't know me at all, but uh, my, my daughter wanted me to stress that even with new policies that are put in place, even with changes, they need to be reinforced and there needs to be um, proper training for the staff who are going to be administering those changes. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a familiar face. Even though we know you, Mr. Cavalier, we're going to ask you to sign in when you finish. Yeah. Don't, don't try to sideline the SOPs here, Mr. Cavalier. <laughs> Will Jenna arrest me if I, if I don't sign in? Is that what you're saying? Well, well actually, we do know where you live. Yeah, so. oh, okay. yeah we know. Well, we could yeah. sign That's you. posted. All right. Go ahead. We'll start um, your clock now. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the board, <clears throat> Superintendent Benson. I'm here tonight as chairman of the Public Safety Committee for the Board of Supervisors. Even though I didn't see school security on your agenda for tonight, I thought that it was an important thing to talk about, and I'm glad you, you, you moved up some comments by, by Bruce to set that forth right at the beginning of the meeting. I thought that was a good tone to set. Because after the Parkland tragedy, everybody, this is their hot button issue right now. So we have to be cognizant of that. I've spoken with the sheriff on more than one occasion since then. What I'm here today to say is that I want the school board and the board of supervisors to work together on this one. Like we've never worked together before. This should be a no brainer. Nobody should be fighting about anything on this. We all have one common goal. And I've spoken with Mr. Cater on this matter, and we seem to be on the same sheet of music, and that was, that was good to hear. Because we, we have limitations. We only have authority to do certain things at our level. We can't enact gun laws. We can't make rules about mental health issue, rules and issues and all that, background checks, investigations, all those things are above our, our pay grade, so to speak. We can, however, commit more resources to school security because we need to better protect our students, our children, our teachers, and all school personnel and everybody in those buildings during the day. People get on the bus in the morning, get in the car, or walk to school and expect to be safe all day long. <clears throat> so that is our goal. Schools and public safety are always a top priority. So if you look at this one particular issue, it's school security. So that combines those two priorities, which make, should make it rise to the very top of all our priorities, right? We always, we always have changing priorities, but right now I think it's clear what it should be. It's imperative that we develop a new, a better action plan. If I could have a little time. Well, you can wrap it up. I will. If you take a little longer than most, we'll just... Uh... Tolerate it. It's imperative that we develop a new action plan for school security and implement such plan as soon as possible. I heard Ms. Morovsky talk. I've known Sandy for 35 years now. Listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. And that, that dovetails nicely into a security decision and plan for our schools. 
The sheriff is more than willing to work with the schools on this issue, and consideration should also be given to bringing in some outside security consultants, whatever we need to do on this. As a member of the Finance and Budget Committee, I'd highly recommend that a new budget, the new budget that you're going to talk about tonight, include resources for beefed up security measures. I know we don't know a number right now, but let's, let's put a contingency in there for that, because I'll support that. If a, if a plan can be developed before next budget year, by all means, we'll find the money, we'll do it. We have to, we have to do this. Is this recording? is the most important thing that we have going right now. Report it? Okay, good. Thank you for your attention to this most critical issue tonight. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. My name is Jennifer Lombardo. I live at 107 Orange Blossom Court in the Falmouth District, and I did not plan to stand up tonight. Um, I did just send my school board rep, Sarah, a message. Um, it was something my husband and I had spoken about this past week, um, and it's something that just dovetails into everything that's been coming forward. I'm, I'm a paraprofessional at one of the elementary schools in the county, and I've attended the active shooter training put on by our sheriff's department twice. And once at my request, like, when is it coming? When is it coming? Put out a message to all the staff, encouraging folks to attend. And I think that that's something that we may want to consider that's not, I don't know what the expense would end up being, but something that could be considered as required training, possibly, for all of our staff. Um, my husband was sheltering in place during the Navy Yard shooting, and they attend training annually. And I'd like to see something like that possibly considered by this board for the members of our staff. There were some more folks that attended when I put out my email from a personal perspective of where I sat on that. Um, some people that I didn't really expect to show up, but I'm not sure legally how that's done, if that can be something that's required, but it's something I'd like to, to offer up. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Lombardo, could you please sign in? Hi, I'm Amy Hall, uh, 11 Easter Drive in the Rock Hill District. Um, I came to talk to you about the CIP that you're voting on tonight. And I wanted to just encourage you. Um, I know that last, last year you didn't prioritize a lot of your CIP items because you were kind of doing a placeholder for this year. I'd like to encourage you to prioritize new construction this year. And the reason is not just overcrowding, which is the obvious one, but it's what you're hearing tonight. I was so happy when they talked about what do you do in the lunchroom or when classes are changing. If you're in these overcrowded uh, lunchrooms, kids are sitting on the floor, kids are sitting everywhere. There's no escape route because kids are sitting in it. So for safety's sake, please prioritize reducing overcrowding. It's really an important part of our safety overall in all of our schools. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close the, oh, one more, okay. If anyone else wants to address the board, please line up so we'll, we'll know um, <coughs> you want to speak. Thank you, Ms. Hall, for signing in. Hi, good evening. My name is Atani Walter. <clears throat> and um, I was in Antigua. When I got a call that the school, there was a threat going around the school, and I got the call from my daughter, <laughs> and when you're out of the country and you have a child in school, you really don't know how to feel. I shut down. I was coming back to the United States the next day. So um, I knew that I was going to be there to comfort her. The very next day when I came back, I made the decision to send my child to school. And that day, the school went into a lockdown. My husband and I instantly went up to the school. That's when I met these ladies. And we're now the greatest of friends. 
Um, I say all that to say this. <clears throat> In time of trouble, I personally believe that a great leader addresses their congregation. Um, we represent Gale Middle School, and we just don't feel like we have been addressed as a group. We haven't been briefed. There are going to be a lot of perceptions going around, a lot of just talk, but we need to know what's actually true, what's not true, and we're not trying to hinder any type of investigation from taking place because we understand that, you know, they have a job to do and we cannot prevent them or stop them or try to interrupt them from doing their job. But we just, as parents, want to know what's going on and we just feel like we do not know. So I feel like we should have been briefed or even debriefed as to the situation. So I just feel like we need to be addressed as parents. I feel like we need more enrichment programs in our school to keep our kids busier doing more positive things than focusing on negative or having idle hands. I am coming from um, a very, very great school, and this is a public school. I, I could have sworn I was in a private school in Fairfax County, and if they can do it there, I believe we can do it here. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes for free to get the job done that we need to get done. More enrichment programs in the school for the kids, and I have a group of people behind me. We don't need a check, we just need to be told what needs to happen, and we're ready. Thank you. Is there someone else who wants to speak? Hi, my name is Kristen Kanu. I live at Seven Crimson Way. I'm in the Falmouth District. And um, my oldest daughter will be going to Gale Middle School next year, so of course this is a concern of mine. Right now I am a substitute teacher at Falmouth for my children, but my background is a mental health therapist. I say that in that um, we have heard a lot about the protection of our schools, and of course, I fully support that, but I would be very interested to know what was told to the children at Gale after this was done. When this came to my attention, I was actually at Falmouth subbing that day, and two of the staff members were had gotten the call. Both of their children attend Gale. Um, and of course, they were, they were hysterically crying, as you can imagine. The only thing that they knew is that there was a lockdown and that police and canine unit were there. Um, they had called Gail during this time, and, and that's all they were told. Um, and they had to ask the question, are the students safe? They weren't even told this information. Um, once the lockdown was lifted, they called Gail again, at that point they didn't know it was lifted. They, when they called, they found out that it was lifted. Um, and, and it was on speaker and I found it very interesting that um, the person who answered said, we will now resume the day as normal. <laughs> there is no normal for students or staff after that. And so that is my question to the board as to what is being done for not only our students, but our staff who have had this tragic incident now happen. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Seeing none? Sure. Okay. Um, we're gonna close the public comment period and uh, come back to the board for the board member comments. We'll start with Mrs. Egan, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a great start to a, a sorely needed conversation. Um, we don't normally have board member comments on the second meeting of the month, but we thought it was important for us to speak to the elephant in the room, of course, which we've already started talking about. Uh, so we've added that to the agenda tonight. Um, by amending the agenda. Um, over the last several days in the wake of the park, Parkland tragedy and our division's recent security lockdowns, we have all received emails asking us what our intentions are with regard to furthering security here in our, in our school division. 
I have a few thoughts that I'd like to share um, because of the amount of emails that I've received. First and foremost, as Dr. Benson said earlier, we are a great deal more advanced than most divisions throughout the country when it comes to security improvements. Many of you have seen the Freelance Star article this morning regarding the city of Fredericksburg and their acceleration of the buzzer entry system. We have had this in our schools for the last three or four years, maybe more. We have retrofitted our entrances um, to provide additional layers and we've expanded our um, school resource um, officer program. Just this week, the President of the United States discussed the possibility of arming our teachers. I'll say this right off the bat, I do not support that idea in any way, shape, or form. What I do, what I do support um, is the further expansion of the school resource officer program to include adding more than one in each of our high schools and possibly middle schools depending on their ADM or their um, um, average daily membership. I do further, I do support further depending, um, I do support further uh, physical security measures and the use of new unexplored technology as well as joint training exercises between the school resource officers and our administrators or their assigned safety um, and security marshals. Um, back to arming teachers, I would implore our leaders in Washington and Richmond to stay the course on barring firearms on every school campus except those carried by carefully selected, specially trained school resource officers who are career law enforcement um, officers with sworn authority. There are several reasons for taking this position. Law enforcement officers who respond to an incident at a school could mistake a teacher or any other armed person who is not in uniform as an assailant. Anyone who, has, who hasn't received the extensive training by law enforcement officers will likely be mentally unprepared to take a life especially the life of a student assailant. Firearm skills degrade quickly, which is why most law enforcement agencies require their officers to practice on a shooting range frequently, usually it's once a month. Under simulated high stress conditions, anyone without such frequent ongoing practice will likely have difficulty using a firearm safely and effectively. In addition to maintaining marksmanship, ongoing firearms practice helps law enforcement officers overcome the psychological response to stress that can reduce the fine motor skills required to accurately fire a weapon. Anyone who possesses a firearm on, on a campus or at any of our schools must be able to keep it both ready for use and absolutely secure. Law enforcement officers, are, they receive training regularly that enables them to overcome attempts to access their weapons. Discharging a firearm in a crowded school is an extremely risky action with consequences that can include the wounding and or death of innocent students, teachers, and staff. Law enforcement officers receive training and practice in evaluating quickly the risks of firing. They hold their fire when, they risk, when the risks are too high to others. So rather than go on with, with more bullet points, all I'm gonna ask you all to do, and anybody watching at home, is to write your legislators on the federal and state levels to plead for funding and instituting grant programs to implement security improvements, training, and to expand existing SRO programs or to start them where they might not yet exist. What am I going to do? I am asking my board to include in its next budget priority discussions to include these security initiatives and that the finance and budget committees be prepared to take this up while developing a budget. We can't ask our teachers or staff to take on this responsibility in any jurisdiction. If they wanted to carry a firearm, they would have become law enforcement officers rather than teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Chase. Um, I just wanted to thank people who came out and brought up issues of mental health and to just say that um, I'm bringing some of my expertise to some discussions about these issues and I hope we can uh, do some things to support our students. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McCosker. Thank you. Uh, you know, we take school se uh, security seriously here in Stafford and um, I want to make sure that, you know, you all know that the school leadership employees and the security teams not, not only work with the sheriff department, but we have a real thick manual too that we all sign every year. Uh, do we need to practice it more? I think so. Uh, do we need to re review it? I think so. Uh, do we need to work more with our sheriff department? I think so. But as a security professional and a combat veteran who has shot his weapon in anger and got shot in that before, okay? It's like that word shot in that, right? <laughs> uh, you need a weapon in the school. You need a law enforcement, you need a badge, and you need a weapon in the school. Do we need to work on our physical security measures? Of course. 
Do we need to make sure that our uh, administrative assistants are, are doing their job up front? Of course. You need a weapon in the school. That costs money. We got to look for grants. You got to talk to the Board of Supervisors. And you got to talk to us. Because it's going to be a funding issue. A friend came up to me the other day and said, hey, Dwayne, so let me get this straight. We can fund a law enforcement officer to protect money in a bank, but we can't do it for our kids in school. And so I sat and I thought about that as a security professional, and, I'm, and I am a security professional. I said, you know, that's, that's a pretty steep, deep statement. I really never thought of it like that, but it's true. You know, we're in a day and age where we need to protect our kid. Look, weapon, badge, in school, right? I guess you got my point on that. Finally, uh, uh, I'm happy to see the supervisors here tonight. Thank you very much for those of you who showed up. Uh, got a new supervisor in George Washington District, Tom Cohn. Congratulations. I finally have a supervisor, so I'm real happy now to call him up and complain. Uh, <laughs> Hey, we're holding a school input forum at the George, for the George Washington District at Ferry Farm Elementary School on 8 March. It's going to be a good showing. We're going to have a lot of folks there, at, and we're going to pass out a lot of good information. We're going to talk about school security, too, a little bit, okay? And so you need to show up. You need to be there. 7 p.m., 8 March, Ferry Farm Elementary School. You'll, you'll get Blackboard. If you go to Dixon Smith or if you go to Grafton, if you go to Ferry Farm, you're going to get an invite. You're going to be... Bombard, bombarded with invites. Lastly, I want to make sure I let the administrative assistants know I heard them loud and clear about their pay and about their job that they do each day. And you all know that when you walk in the front office and those admin assistants, they know what's going on. They're managing the schedule. They're managing the principal. They're managing the assistant principal. And they're not getting paid a lot of money. So I know that Dr. Benson and his staff right now are working on that issue. And oh, by the way, guess who's letting the people in the school every day with that air phone buzzer? It's the admin assistants, right? So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind also when we talk about funding. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. Ms. Hazard. I would like to just first start off with um, a job well done to our Gale um, middle school teachers, staff who handled a situation in a week that was very high um, intensity and emotional. You all were the professionals that I know that you are, and I know it was displayed that day. I heard that loud and clear. So from this board member who represents a lot of the students who sit in your seats, thank you. Um, I also would like to just make a broad comment about tragedies can do lots of things. I've watched it in the various jobs that I've had. It can either divide or it can, uh, it can join us. I'm hoping what we hear tonight is that this tragedy can form some partnerships between a lot of us that um, for many years, um, I think we talk at each other. I think now is the time and I hope people that what we say, and I, and I say that in, in deep um, commitment, I hope in two weeks we are as committed as we are today because we need to be. Because I know what got me on this school board was getting involved in stuff. So I'm looking at some of you and saying, hey, you get this job in four or five years. <laughs> but you are the change, but we have to be committed to the long term. Some of my concerns, we have to talk. It was delightful to see Mr. Cavalier here. Okay, we can open that dialogue, but we need that, that with parents. Hearing parents say, I am now gonna be in the schools because I'm in there and I know who's in there. And I, it's a little lonely for some of you teachers. I know it is. Because when I used to be in there, there was a whole lot of us. It is not as many as it used to be. We wanna partner with our students because the way that we find out things, you are our best resource. You really are. You know what's going on. I would like us to look into these tip lines and making sure that we have those available and that you know how to use them and it's easy to access. That is something poor Dr. Benson has known. I also need us, I think, to partner with our mental health colleagues. For those who may have gone 
um, to the um, county administrator's uh, presentation about revenue and his challenges, his number one on there from my perspective was that our Department of Social Services needs some help. If you need that um, link, please let me know. So we need to partner again across the street. And then from a school perspective, we need to think about our facilities. What are we building? Are we building large, huge schools that we are not touching our students as much as we need to? Are we building the schools in the right way? So it has to be this broad partnership. I hope we may look to communicate with our community and also come up with ideas. The seven of us, and even Dr. Benson and his expertise, we don't have all the answers. We do want to hear from you. Please let us know. I think we will, as a board, or I hope we will as a board, be talking about forums that we can get that information. March 7th, or you can give that, Ms. Healy, if you want to give the March 7th meeting. I won't do it for you. Go ahead. On March 7th, um, we are having a listening tour, which will cover a variety of topics. I know one of them, and it's not to compete with Mr. McCoskers. I know that date was ahead of time, so please know. But I know from the, um, that that has been um, put on by our communications office. It was scheduled in advance. If, that, if you would like another opportunity to come and talk about, I know security will be one of those issues. So that's all. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. Ms. Decatur. And my microphone's still on. <laughs> I got to get better at that. <clears throat> so first of all, I, I just want to start by thanking Miss Kirsten Sandberg de Salvia. Is that how you pronounce her name, sir? <coughs> Our teacher of the year, and I, I got here tonight um, it, with a little bit of a heavy heart, obviously, as I, I think we all do. And, and I got this note, and it said, um, it says, special people make special schools. Uh, and, and I think that that includes every single one of us in this room. Um, her four-year-olds in her classroom made us some soap, <laughs> and uh, they learned about you know how it's made. And uh, and and this little note that she included says that uh, they chose lavender to include in the soap um, because it's calming. She says so. Feel free to wash your hands when the school board duties get stressful. <laughs> so I'll be using that later. Um, Generally, I look for every opportunity to stay positive and upbeat uh, and optimistic, but I think sometimes there's you know, only enough room to be uh, very realistic. And, and now's one of those times. Um, as I said tonight, my heart's been very heavy. It has been for a few weeks, obviously. Um, I've watched the news, I've read stories of the first hand, hand accounts, um, and I've had some really hard conversations with my husband about whether or not we would even risk sending our son to public school, which is you know, interesting because I'm sitting on the Stafford County Public School Board questioning whether or not I would send my sons to public school in light of recent events. Um, so I wanna thank all of you for coming out tonight. Um, I was really overwhelmed with, with gratitude to see this room so full because it rarely is um, and I think it takes things like this to bring our community together I, I wish that it didn't um, and I hope that it keeps up uh, in the long run um, so this is the first school board meeting following such a tragic event and um, taking place in our country and then directly followed by some really nerve-wracking incidents taking place right here you know very close to home um, again, it's a time to come together and make some lasting changes that will be here long after these initial discussions fade. That's very important. Uh, and I want to thank Jack Cavalier, who I didn't know was coming tonight, um, but he called me immediately, almost immediately after um, the, the Florida incident occurred. Um, and he asked me what we currently have in place, what I feel we need. Um, and he gave me some ideas as well that he pledges to fully support. Um, some of our conversations included taking a good look at the ingress, egress. And I think that we do have a great system in place. Um, but, you know, we need to look at our procedures for utilizing those systems. Um, making sure that we have dedicated SROs at every school is every school is something that I fully support, not just high schools. Um, uh, we also had a conversation about metal detectors. 
that's a conversation. Uh, I want to make sure that we keep our students safe we, without creating an environment where they feel institutionalized. Um, but obviously the number one thing is safety. Um, so I think it's important that we, we will address safety. We will work together to get funding. Um, to make sure that we're putting measures in place so that our students have the mental health support they need, the safety protocol that is required, and so that our children can come to school without looking over their shoulders and wondering if today will be the day that they become another statistic. Uh, additionally, I will be the squeaky wheel until I hear that there has been additional training for every single one of our schools on how to properly implement security protocols we already have in place. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating for me to hear that our school board prior to my coming on uh, spent a lot of money on a really great system for allowing people to come into our schools and that it's not being utilized properly. Uh, so I would really like to make sure that we are talking with our leadership at our schools and making sure that that's being utilized properly, first and foremost, because we already have that in place. Um, and again, thank you guys. Sorry to be wordy, but... It's one of those days. Thank you all for being here, um, for being involved, and please stay involved. Thank you, Mr. Gable. Done. Thank you. So I, I had something on Black History Month because it is Black History Month, but I also um, had this on my heart, and so I'm going to read this also. Uh, school shootings are on the rise. Some you hear about and some you don't you know, Chicago, Washington, D.C. Um, the Florida shooting and the outcries of our youth is the newest reminder of a need to improve school safety. But we also need gun control. I want our students to be safe. I want them to feel safe. I want our teachers to teach. I want our law enforcement to do their job and keep our community safe. I want us to also look at implementing risk assessments for some students that are isolated eat alone, and that students are leaking on via Facebook or among each other. We must take these warnings serious. I want fairness, though, kindness, and comforting environment for our students so they can feel safe. We need resources in every school, and that in regards not only resource officers, but behavioral social workers, mental health, to help. My question remains, are we disciplining the right students and are we doing it fairly and equally and overlooking those that need help with behavioral and emotional problems? And I'll give you an example. I have a 17-year-old. He's been stopped three times in one month for no reason. And my heart was always like, is he going to make it home safely? These are things that we talk to some of our parents, we talk to our children about. How to put your hands on a steering wheel. How to answer to a cop. How to behave. And now I have an additional issue when he's in school, wondering if he is going to come home. I raised four kids in Stafford County Middle in, in Stafford County Schools. And they've been good to me. Teachers have been good to me. And I am for teachers. I want them to teach. There is anxiety and there is high stress because I feel it. Um, sorry to take some more time. Go ahead. We don't have a three minute limit for us. Sorry. I know. <laughs> and so it's um, African American History Month. And we need to celebrate it with knowledge. Because sometimes we say, why do we have African American History Month? You know, once it was a week and now it's a month. Why it's a month? I want it to be integrated, in, in woven into our history. Because African American history is our history. It's everyone's history. And that's how we need to feel. Um, Carter G. Woodson was the sole individual responsible for creating Negro History Week in Washington, D.C. in February 1926. The black experience was too important simply to be left to a small group of academics and believed that his role was to use black history and culture as a weapon in the struggle for racial uplift. His goal was to ensure that school children be exposed to black history. Woodson chose the second week of February in order to celebrate the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. 
The development of Black History Week to a full month was proposed by the leaders of the Black United Students and Kent State University in February 1969, and they held their inaugural celebration one year later, in February 1970. Quickly following that event, schools followed suit, creating clubs, playing hosts, lectures, and more, all of which is still seen today. Uh, so this holds true today when all too often only the most negative aspects of African American communities get highlighted. We are overwhelmed with images of rowdy athletes and, and reality TV's examples and of uh, not of the success of black people. And we are subjected daily to unfair stereotypes and assumptions from a culture that is still learning to be accepted. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm going to take my time to thank everyone who came tonight, the students, the parents, the staff, the members of the community, because, and, and, and uh, let me not forget um, the Board of Supervisors. We have the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Ms. Meg Bumpkin, sitting here, and Mr. Cohen and Mr. Cavalier. Um, I'm very grateful for your coming here. I'm also grateful for Mrs. Bumpke's reaching out. Um, you know, well before tonight, to ask, what do we need? What can we do to enhance security? And I think that's a question that we as a community have to address. Um, we, we've, we've gotten a, a welcome, as I'll take it, from the Board of Supervisors to come forth with, with what we need. What can we do to enhance security? Uh, I've heard a lot of good ideas tonight. I saw Dr. Benson taking notes. I know we were taking notes. Um, there's, there's a lot more that can be added to that. And I would suggest that we set forth and ask Dr. Benson to come up with a proposal, but a community forum, and it can be you know, over the course of one month, two months, three months. This is not something we're going to solve tonight or next month. This is a long-term project, and it involves our, our, our most precious community. Our, our assets are our children, and our students, our staff, and whatever we can do to make them safe is only going to make our schools better. So if, if we can start thinking about that, board members, if you have any suggestions to give to Dr. Benson, we had some, some really great meetings when we were, dare I mention, doing the redistricting in the, was it the high schools. We, we put our communities together. We had people sitting at different tables, you know, they, they brainstormed, they came up with ideas, they presented them. It was fantastic. Stafford is so rich. We have such a diverse population and we have so many qualified people from all tracks, you know, of, of occupations. We need to take advantage of that because we as a board, I mean, you know, we're, we're a group and, and yes, we make the decisions, but we should not make those decisions without the community input because this is a community issue. And I take to heart, thoughts and prayers are not enough. I mean, we all have our prayers in our hearts, but that's, that's not going to make a change. And if we're gonna make a change, we need to make a commitment. And not a commitment to change it at the next meeting, but to, to, to move forth. And, I, and I, I will ask that, you know, that the Board of Supervisors give us some time to come up with that proposal because I appreciate Mr. Cavalier's you know, offer, put it in your budget. Well, we're gonna be presenting our proposed budget for next year, next week. So I don't, I don't think that we're in any position other than some, some you know, starting point ideas, such as putting the SROs, the school resource officers in each of our schools. You know, that's a start, but there's gonna be a lot more you know, that can be done. And, and it's something that I would, I, I appreciate our staff, love our sheriff's office. We would not be where we are without our sheriff's office. The partnership with them and what they give to us as a school system is, is just indescribable. And we are so fortunate to, to have them as our resource. And they have just stepped up whenever we've needed them and probably times without us even having to ask. 
So you know we have we have these this good basis that we're starting from, but we need we need to move forward, and we need to be the best, and to to, to make it safe for our children. I, I I'd love to say you know it'll be perfect, but it's not a perfect world, but we can do everything that we can, you know for for our, for our kids. So if if we can be you know thinking about that, if anyone has any ideas, any community members have any ideas. You know, share them because this is something that I, I, I think we as a board have an opportunity to do some good and, and we need to take advantage and we need to take advantage of our community you know, who is willing to, to step up and help. Now is the time to, to get started on it and, and I imagine it's not going to be darn we're done done this is going to be an ongoing yeah it's going to be evolving it's going to be educational. So enough, enough for me. But that, that's my, um, that's my request. And and if something, I mean, and it, I wouldn't expect you to come back at the next meeting. But certainly, I'd say a month from now, we should have you know some ideas to, to put forth so we can start, you know, taking making some plans to to move forward. We have so much expertise in our staff, our teachers, our parents, and our community that we need we need to take advantage of that and move forward and, and, and our goal should be to be the best. And with the offer from the supervisors to help, we know the sheriff's department's there for us. You know, I, I don't see how we can lose. So thank you. That brings us to the superintendent's comments. Second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, just, just to add to Ms. Young's comments uh, this evening, uh, I want to be very clear, we value diversity of culture and thought in our schools and in our community. Uh, we have our inaugural meeting of the superintendent's equity diversity and opportunity committee tomorrow evening and uh, we're some 35 members strong so we're looking looking forward to getting that work going uh, i also want to um, kind of add on to mr mcosker's comments uh, we're going to look to go on and contract to uh, have the analysis done on uh, pay for our administrative assistance and the other uh, employee classifications that have not been reviewed to date. I think we can do that with savings in this current uh, fiscal year, so I'm hopeful that we can do that in relatively, um, relatively short order and come back to the board with some, some recommendations uh, to, to move those folks along as well. And then finally, I just want to note that we have our DARE basketball game on Friday uh, this week. Uh, it will not be at um, a Brook Point, which is where it has been previously. Forever. It will Forever. be at, yeah, it will it? be at Stafford High. So I just oh. want to make sure everybody knows where to go and we're not scrambling at the last minute. I was, get I was laid on as to be the center, but they cut me this year. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my remarks, Madam Chair. What time does that Sorry. start, Dr. Benson? Time. I want to say it's seven. Usually and aren't the proceeds of that, uh, that basketball game given to the D.A.R.E. program? So it's a great opportunity to come out and support our schools, support our sheriff's office, and, and all those. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a Let's lot see, of fun. Is it 7 o'clock? Is it 7? Okay, just take a look and then. I can, I okay. can pull my calendar up here and tell you. Well, we'll make sure that's on the, uh, the front page and the activities coming up. And for those who don't know what it's all about, it's the law enforcement officers versus the teachers. teachers. That's important. Or, or the school board member. Z. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Brinson, according to your calendar, it is at 6 p.m. <laughs> well, and I think it's just great that you access my calendar faster than I could. <laughs> <laughs> Super clerk. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have anything else, Dr. Benson? No, and thank you for your remarks earlier. We really appreciate you giving that summary. I think it's important for the public to know what's in place, recognizing that there's, there's, there's certainly more to be done. And, and, and I think I saw you taking notes from some of these comments that came in tonight on where we can make some immediate changes that won't cost us anything. And those I'm not going to wait until we have a community meeting for. <laughs> we'll see that right away as some of the members have commented. All right, so that brings us to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? A motion to approve consent. Motion second. by Ms. Hazard, second by Ms. Egan. Uh, 
Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We have three action items on tonight. The first is to approve the nomination of the Boots House Program for the Virginia School Boards Association's Excellence in Workforce Readiness Award and authorize the school board chairperson to sign the nomination packet. I believe Dr. Chase mm -hmm. may have a may I move motion to approve? for that. Doc not you, Dr. Chase. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, motion to approve the <laughs> signing of the Boots. Um, that's, that's good enough. Pam. All right, motion by Pam Dr. Chase, second. second by Mrs. Young. Dr. Chase brought this award to our attention. It's a brand new award by the Virginia School Boards Association, and we are, uh, I'll say, optimistic that we have a good chance of bringing this award to Stafford County Public Schools and Stafford High School, who, who is the, the home school for this, but students from all our high schools across Stafford County participate in that Boots program. So thank you, Dr. Chase. All right, um, all in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries unanimously. Um, and I, if you, if I don't sign that tonight, you can give it to Dr. Benson to bring in the morning. Okay. All right. Uh, 8.02 approved the 2018-2019 middle school program of studies middle school course catalog. This has been before the board before, and we've made some uh, changes. Thank you, Dr. Strike, to make this um, what we would maybe say more user friendly for parents of middle school uh, students, and we, we appreciate you working with us. Do we have a motion to approve this? Motion item? to approve. Motion by Ms. Egan. Do we have second. a second? Second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? I do. Um, Ms. Hazard? I would like to just echo Ms. Healy's comments to compliments to those who are working hard to streamline and make the course selection process easier because having just done it at the high school level, and I've now done it twice, it's nerve wracking. So the more we can do that, I think that's great. Um, I know that Ms. Daniel is not here tonight, but I want to make this side note. Um, I'd like to add that I'm concerned though at the middle school level that our counselors at our large schools, and I will speak to A.G. Wright and um, to Gail, that have over 900 students who meet, I know they do it, A.G. Wright, with every eighth grade parent and their child to help them as they transition and pick their classes. I am concerned that then these counselors whose other duties include being with our students, um, that that's a challenge because they are now spending 300 families I know I was one of them several years ago in there going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my high schooler and all this stuff, that we are pulling them away from those duties um, that they are usually out in our community, um, in our schools. So I just would like to highlight this and I would like to look to our staff for any suggestions on how we can ensure that our counselors during this eighth grade push of seeing 300 families, at least at some schools, can make sure that the other duties that they do are, are also in there. So it's just something long term. I know that's a challenge at our large schools. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. And I'm sure Dr. Benson will be looking into any issues there and giving whatever help they need uh, to address it. Any other discussion? All in favor of motion to approve the 2018-2019 Middle School Program of Studies Middle School Course Catalog, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The last item on the action um, items is 8.03, approve the fiscal year 2019-2028. That's a 10-year range. Um, capital improvement plan, infrastructure projects. <coughs> we have a motion. <coughs> approve. Motion by Mr. McOsker. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Chase. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's no secret, secret given my um, statements at our recent work session, um, that I will not support any of the rebuild of Ferry Farm Elementary School right now, while we have exponential growth in areas such as Hartwood and uh, North Stafford. The proposal to rebuild Ferry Farm was originally amended by Mr. McOsker to limit the capacity to 700, most recently changing his mind to increase it to 950. Regardless, that only adds another 250 seats to an area that essentially has no growth. I would, however, support funding a renovation as we did with Stafford Elementary School, Falmouth, and Grafton. Since that isn't listed as an option, I will be voting no to putting the CIP forth um, to be included in the joint CIP process. Thank you, Ms. Egan. Any other comments? Yes. Ms. Hazard? Um, I, too, will be um, voting against this because I believe that our process um, to do this was a great year to get started. Um, I, 
the wedge again is not where I thought we would be. I really thought we were going to be further down of really having this discussion. I believe since these projects were put in this order, we have the, this board has changed the elementary um, education specs that has reduced in the right way the size of our schools um, to accommodate what program capacity is. So I think there has been significant change since then. Um, I understand, I don't know if I, I guess I am not clear on whether we are voting on this, that this is the order. If this is the order of the projects, I will have to vote against. If it is to approve them as a wedge, I will, I will be honest, I will consider it at this time. But I do believe, um, and Mr. McCosker, I think, has tried <laughs> valiantly to try and get a joint CIP committee meeting with our counterparts in the Board of Supervisors to talk specifically about this topic. We have gotten, from what I seem to understand, nothing. So I feel like um, without that dialogue after our meeting in December, and three meetings, I just feel like there needs to be some kind of discussion prior. I just don't feel comfortable that we're there. Ms. Decatur. Uh, I'd also like some clarification as to whether we're approving this in the order, you know, that it's in or whether we're approving a wedge because um, additionally, I, you know, I sat on that committee. Um, my suggestion at our work uh, session in December was to send it to our CIP advisory committee um, in this manner so that they could then go back through their process. Um, their process last time indicated that some of these things needed to be shifted and I was in 100% 100% supportive of shifting some of those things based on the the needs and the reasons why. Um, so again, I just want to make it very clear that I, I supported pushing this through so that it could then be looked at by the CIP advisory committee again um, and gone through the same process because, again, in our first year of that um, of that committee and that going through that process, it, it, you know, we kind of got our feet wet, but it, it, it didn't really end up the way I would have liked to have seen it, um, you know, as far as accomplishing um, things. So yeah, some clarification would be really great. Are we approving a wedge? Are we sending it over like this and putting a stamp on it? What's happening? Any other discussion? Did you do you want to answer a question or someone? Well, well I think that's a board question to answer. It, well, it is my understanding that we never exactly approved a particular order, and given the fact that the CIP, the Capital Improvement Plan, is a living document that is always subject to, to right. change, I would not, uh, you know, want to send anything over that this is this is the order that we're going to do things for the next 10 years. Okay. Right. I'm not even sure we can say what we're going to do for the next year because things may change. And, and this so is, 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 yeah. that, is that the understanding of the board, or did, and, and did anybody that, and think what, that yeah, that's it was going to be in that order? As, I mean, that's my understanding as well. Go ahead, Dr. Benson. Hey, Madam Chair, if I, if I might add, <clears throat> for clarification's purpose, <clears throat> the, what, we're, what we're asking the board to approve here tonight is a list of the infrastructure projects that is attached to this item. The, the rest of this is background, and the discussion that we had about the large projects that would be considered as a part of the CIP process. And I'd be happy to get Mr. Horan to come to the to the podium if necessary. No, I, and I would just like to say, Madam Chair, no, and I appreciate the comments of the board members, but you know, I mean, listen, I, I've been on the board for six years now. Ferry Farm Elementary School has has been there for either a renovation or a rebuild for well over ten. It kept getting pushed back by a combination of a school staff and principal saying, no, I think it makes more sense to do Moncure this time. I think it makes more sense to do Falmouth. I think it, more, it makes more sense to do Grafton this time. And so then the light shines on Ferry Farm, the kids down south, and they say, you know what? You're going to get a rebuild in 2021. And we say, thank goodness, we need it. It's the oldest elementary school in our division. 17 elementary schools, there's two elementary schools that have not been renovated. Hartwood and Ferry Farm. Ferry Farm is 1957. 1957. Okay. It's 
projects, CIP projects, if you open this list up, there's very few, if I can find like one out of like 40 that deal with Ferry Farm for, to put money into it. And we've been doing this for years. We've been pushing, no, you're not getting new lights because the kids can't see in the hallway. You're not getting new lights because, uh, you know, you're getting rebuilt. Oh, you're not getting a new this, you're getting rebuilt. Oh, we're not doing this because you're getting rebuilt. And it's been continually being pushed off. So then it gets taken off the CIP last year by the board, I voted no, to go into this process that we're gonna go a, a joint board of supervisor, school board uh, uh, staff, and we're gonna evaluate, we're gonna evaluate the schools. Guess what they came back with? High schools, the courthouse, high school six, Ferry Farm Elementary, right behind the new high school. Breaks, er, stop, something went wrong here. They went back for another relook, and next thing you know, elementary school 18 in Hartwood pops in. So I'm sitting there, and my constituents and my kids are sitting there going, when are we getting taken care of? Is it just because there's only one school in the George Washington district? I only have one board member, me, taking care of it, and one supervisor? I mean, is that how we're doing business? So what we do is we build more houses near Hartwood and Embry Mill, and we just keep getting those kids that aren't even here new schools. Is that the plan? Is that the plan? No, of course that's not a fair plan. We made a commitment to renovate or rebuild Ferry Farm in a timely manner, and, it's, and, it, and the time is now, the time is coming. Let's, let's get it done. Let's, let's honor the commitment that we made years ago. Let's stop putting the kids down south just because there's one school board member and one supervisor. Let's just forget about them. That's not fair. That's not parity. That's not equality. Okay, any other comments? Mr. McCosker, you know I love you. You know I do, and I support Ferry Farms, but I do take umbrage with the comments about leaving it out. And I, I mean, granted, yes, Ferry Farms should be on, we should be underway on Ferry Farms based on the commitment that we made. I think I'm probably the only one left from when this whole thing started to renovate. Uh, you know, first we renovated Falmouth, then we renovated um, Stafford L, and then we renovated Grafton. We rebuilt Moncure, and the next was Ferry Farms. I agree, and I support it 100%. It has nothing to do with one school in the district. Unfortunately, it was the end of the line. And when you're at the end of the line, things don't move, you know, as, as well as planned in many cases. So I will be supporting that. I think that there's some light at the end of the tunnel for our elementary schools with some potential um, relief in the works with respect to preschools and, and the, uh, the Head Start for getting some additional space. And I think, you know, we as a board need to make a commitment to look at a countywide elementary school redistricting. Just the fact that there's no new kids being coming in from Ferry Farms doesn't mean that the, the district can be expanded. If the capacity is increased, we can bring it in from the other end. So there's, you know, there, there's a need, and I, I actually think it's going to save Stafford money by renovating, and um, not renovating, by rebuilding Staff, um, Ferry Farms for a higher capacity. I think, you know, we, we can do the studies. That's just what my gut tells me, and, you know, I'm many times right, sometimes wrong, but We'll have to be looking at that. Right now, what we're looking at is this proposed list of infrastructure projects. So we're, we'll have that discussion, and we need to have that discussion. And I'm, I'm right there for you, but it's, I, I don't think this is, you know, one member against another member or at all political. It's, and, and we're all going to have different views, you know, which, which is good, because if we all agreed, well, why bother having all of us? Um, but right now, what we need to do is to, uh, is to look at a plan, and I, I know the superintendent has asked us to, to move this to action if we're, um, if, if we're able to. This is, oh, this is the action. Okay, we'll get to the other ones we want to move. Um, because of our commitment to the supervisors and sending the uh, information there, you know, it, we, we really should be making a decision this evening. So um, 
what we're looking at is approving the proposed infrastructure project list. There are years with this and there are amounts, but it is always subject to change based on the need of the school division. If a roof starts leaking, that's going to have to move up in line. If, the, if those uh, boilers and chillers and all those things that cost a million dollars each break, well, we'll have to address it. But for now, this is the list that has been put together. This is a list we've discussed before, and now it's you know to us for action. So if there's no further comment, uh, anybody else? No? Um, let's call the question. All in favor of the motion to approve this proposed infrastructure project list, clarifying it's uh, there's no priority order. I mean, we have the years here, but we're not prioritizing this list. It's, it, it speaks for itself. Um, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay, Madam Clerk, will you pull the board, please? Dr. Chase? Aye. Ms. Decatur? Aye. Ms. Egan? No. Ms. Hazard? No. Ms. Healy? Yes. Mr. McCosker? Yes. Ms. Young? Aye. Madam Chair, motion passes five to two. Okay, that brings us to the information items. 9.01, approve the fiscal year 2019 budget. Chris. Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller. Fulmer. <laughs> Fuller brushes, Fulmer. Fulmer. Just, Fulmer. You had me say Fulmer. Fulmer. <laughs> okay, it's getting a little late. All right, if, if you could just briefly address the changes that the board um, has uh, put into this proposed budget that make it different from the superintendent's budget, using the superintendent's proposed budget as a base. Sure. Um, just a very quick high level, the total budget request for the operating fund is $295,814,894, which is an increase of um, a little over $16.9 million from FY18. Um, the changes from the superintendent's budget to um, this current budget as it is presented uh, for the school board approved budget includes an increase of a little over $1.1 million into service scale enhancements, which currently include the paraprofessional, the bus drivers, and the bus monitors. Um, there was a $26,000 decrease to some other miscellaneous compensation adjustments as they were originally an estimate. And after we settled on the firm numbers, you guys um, asked us to back out that um, to be determined amount. Um, we reduced our total ask for FTEs by four growth teacher positions to um, come up with a, um, um, as the school board discussed during the work session, to um, kind of a ratio of what the state is projecting for our new students for uh, general education growth uh, for next year. Um, also um, had some additional salary and benefit savings on the VRS side and on the health insurance side which um, came up to a net increase from the superintendent's proposed budget of $194,000 um, and some change, um, bringing our total funding gap to $12.624,437. Is that a detailed enough but high level overview of the changes? Is that good? So just in, in summary, what the school board did was add to the proposed uh, budget. I mean, we, we tweaked a little, but, but we, we increased the budget proposed by the superintendent. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Fulmer? No? No questions? Um, Dr. Benson, had you uh, requested that we consider moving this to action? If you could... Um, I did. Tell us, tell us why that would be uh, I did, um, of benefit to the staff. I did, please. Madam Chair, um, and and that's because we are we are due to present the school board's funding request, approved funding request to the board of supervisors on March sixth. Mm -hmm. um, if in the event that the board decides <clears throat> to delay and, and not move this to action um, this evening, and I understand we received some public comment encouraging encouraging us to not do that. Uh, we would need to have a um, called meeting for Monday in order to. Um, in order to approve it um, uh, in the event that the board made significant changes on that Monday, that would present a challenge for us in getting ready to present the following day to the board of supervisors. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Uh, do we have any um, 
Madam Chair. Thoughts on the board about moving this to action? Ms. Hazard? Um, as I stated in our um, work session, I really do believe that this budget needs to include some of the security enhancements. I brought this up in our meeting in there. So yes, it will go up. Um, I believe that we were <laughs> provided um, with a partner with the Board of Supervisors essentially asking us for that. And I feel like if we don't, if we miss that opportunity to say to our community, we value this, and I know that we are doing a lot, and um, I guess in this instance, I would support the wedge, um, but I don't want us to develop some programs that later then we have to take away from compensation to fund. I would really probably prefer to give our staff, I will be um, voting, I know, in favor of the basics of this, but I believe we are missing an important ask here regarding security that I would really like the input of staff um, and would prefer to defer to that time because I believe if there are things that we have do not have right now in here, this is the time we need to ask for it. I am not trying to make work for you all, but I think it goes in the upward direction. I, I, can, I will be on record. The things that are presented here I am comfortable with, but I believe we're missing an important part of the ask. Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Egan. Uh, as I stated in the work session, um, my opposition to this is that we just received this information at whatever, 6.15, 6.30, whatever time it was. Um, as Mr. Hayes presented up here earlier, um, they haven't had a chance to look at it. My constituents haven't had a chance to look at it. Whether it's, you know, two or four changes or 24 changes, I still believe that the, the public needs, uh, you know, we have a responsibility to the public to be transparent. And that is my only opposition to this. I don't have a problem with the budget as it is, but I have a problem with moving it um, and voting on it when, it's, when we typically, our practices, we have it on for information for at least two weeks. So I, I won't be supporting moving it. Dr. Chase? No. Mr. McOsker? No. Ms. Young? When are we planning on presenting it? It's the, we're scheduled to present to the Board of Supervisors next Tuesday. Is that going to give? The, the earliest we could have a meeting would be Monday. So what that would mean is that the staff would have to make um, any changes uh, overnight, which even with Munis, I doubt is, is doable. Um, Do you want me to comment? Depending on what the change is. Okay. Okay. The, the only concern I have is I go back to where we were in the work session. Um, I want the school board to own this budget. I want us to present a budget. I want us to be responsible for it. I want the majority of the presentation to be by the school board and not the superintendent. You can have part in it, but it's our budget and I think we need to be responsible and prepare for it so if that gives us enough time for Tuesday then so be it but that's the only concern I have that give us enough time to prepare for us to prepare to present it mr. Cater you have I, I think the only <laughs> my microphone's still on <laughs> the oh, um, turned off Are so okay. I'm sorry. It, it, as much as I don't want to have a meeting Monday um, Monday's my birthday and I don't want to put any more stress on you guys. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think I just heard loud and clear from, from Mr. Cavalier that they'd like to see some numbers in our budget, um, you know, and we talk about how it's our, our duty and responsibility to send over a budget that accurately reflects what we need, uh, you know, to run a school division. So I, I would be hesitant also. I was really hoping in our work session that we could approve a budget tonight, send over s some additional needs. Um, but I, I think that Mr. Cavalier made it pretty clear that they'd like to see it in our budget. And so that's my only hesitation. Um, if, if we're just adding a couple things, does that put you guys in a, in a, in a predicament? Um, and my, I think my other question is, before I um, could, I don't know how this works, is it possible to submit some requests? Uh, like if I say I want to see this for the budget, this number, 
um, added to it, can we like submit some requests by tomorrow or Thursday, have you updated and then convene in a meeting on Monday? Is that, does that give you more time? Is that legal? Well, I don't, I, I think the board can, can do anything it wants. The challenge is going to be to have the request considered by the entire board mm. first to have the um, the staff vet the the interest I don't think there's anyone on this board that that would not welcome you know additional funding for security and we, we certainly you know will seek it um, I, I, I you know my concern is that a week even if we used you know, every day between now and Monday, I'm not sure we could come up with you know, the best proposal for what to meet the needs. I, I don't. I, I think that would be a challenge in itself. But we can certainly. I, th I think we need to put to put something in you there. Put a wedge. Yeah, to, yeah, to put something in there. And I, I yeah. you know, Dr. Benson, we're going to have to look to you to you know check you know with your colleagues or the whoever you know is knowledgeable in this area to come up with a a a, a you know a proposal for it, you know a wedge to, to protect us um, and I think we'd have to go in with the caveat that we still need to do some more work on it Someone but I I, I, I I don't know if we even could get to specifics no, I'm not without sure. considering the full picture here. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. So, so anyway, listen. So you know, the SEA came up and said they, they want a couple of days, and some board members said, "Let's will the board permit put a wedge in for those physical security things in the school?" Okay, those are those are on our dime, right? So those are the things that will wedge the physical security uh, stuff in the school is on our dime, and maybe there's some FTEs that need to go with that some of that physical security uh, thing. So that's something that the security department needs to look at. Okay, but however, comma the I, I want to slide on the number of FTEs that uh, number of police that we'll need to have one deputies deputy badge and gun in each school. And so that is not a school board funded asset. That is a board of supervisors funded asset. So we want, when we want two things. So we want the physical security, which will end up being on our budget, and they'll give us some more money for that, right? FTEs, FTEs security, FTEs to monitor our physical security stuff. But number two is those amount of what Dr. Benson mentioned, you know, those amount of deputies that we'll need to put one deputy in each school and that is a okay, separate full-time full-time deputy full-time FTE full-time equivalent okay, I, th I think we w I would also like to add to that training you know as it might enhance you know our staff's ability to deal with these issues I think right. that that was brought up to us okay. tonight okay. you know, staff development there's there's, there's just going to be so much I'm I, I want to put something in, but I don't want to. I don't want to say this is exactly it because I want to give us the flexibility of being able to to, to change it. Ms. Young, did you have something? No, I just mentioned the no. panic button. Yeah. That, uh, we, we talked yeah. About so I mean, it sounds to me that that we're going to need that meeting next Monday. Monday. Um, now, Ms. Egan, what time is the three-on-three -three meeting? Set for six. Six. Um, I I don't think we could have it any later than five o'clock to um, you know to be able to address this I, I mean that would only give us really 45 minutes to give you 15 minutes although maybe the um, the supervisors would agree to have the, the three on three here next week so you know that would give you a little more time and not have to cost I don't know it's it's just something but it's is 45 minutes going to give us enough time I mean we could try yeah. to schedule it after your meeting but then you know we don't we don't know Right. Well, yeah, you can. They, I mean, they ha they still have time to to publish the location. I'm I'm just thinking that would give us an extra. You know, if we set it at five, if if, if people can make it at that, then that would give us an hour. Okay. Which well, I think that it's maybe fair to say in a we good can figure out the details of that, and and we can set that for five. Yeah. Okay. All right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. One way or another. So, so let's, but let's plan on allocating for us. Can we plan on an hour? Uh, and if we can finish it up earlier, that's even better. Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. And, and we will try to 
certainly try to recognize the um, what what you're able to accomplish. And if sure. you're not able to get everything we need done by Tuesday, then we're going to have to present a preliminary budget. I'm not going to go over there with something that's not going to be absolutely correct because that doesn't serve any of us well. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, to get some of this in, in advance, as Ms. Decatur suggested. If you have some ideas, um, uh, Dr. Benson, if you could share them with the board by the end of the week, at least that would give us the weekend to, to look at it, think about it, and get back with you if we have any questions. I'm sorry to put this, uh, this on you all, but this is too important not to not to address. It is, it is the 11th hour. Um, we'll just have to do the best we can. I mean, it's... And just to clarify, you're okay if we don't have the budget book on Tuesday? <laughs> I mean, if it's not going to be right, I don't want to give it out. And just, I mean, to, just to comment on that's that. That's my personal thing. I'd, I'd rather have it be right. Well, and correct and not mistakes and just to comment try I, to get it done quick. I just want to make a comment to make sure that you know and I, I said this in the work session that we do have the superintendent's budget book that we have adopted that is very very specific down to line item and then we've made what five changes mm -hmm. some pluses and some minuses approximately and we'll make a few more so I want to make sure that the public understands and across the street we have a full budget book which is the superintendent's proposed budget to us that we have adopted and we are going, we've added and subtracted. So there you have it. And, and, and if we have to, we could ask the supervisors well, to defer our budget presentation. I know it's scheduled for that date, but if we have to ask to defer it, perhaps they would be willing to have a special meeting to take our budget. I mean, we will make every effort to be able to present that budget next Tuesday. But if we do not have a budget that we are comfortable with, and that we believe meets the needs of this school division and addresses the additional security measures, then I'd say, you know, we're going to need to ask for an extension. That's, that's not our first choice, but that, that needs to be our backup because we should not go over there with something that is not absolutely correct. And we're not, we're not going to, you know, put the burden on you sure. without giving you the time that you need. So if you can do it, that's fantastic, but if not, We'll just have to, to work with it. Okay? Ma'am, yes, ma just, just to be clear, you know, I, I think there's a, a fairly good likelihood we would be in the position to um, help the board present the approved uh, funding request to the supervisors, but we would likely need to follow up with a hard copy of the full budget book uh, some number of days later. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, I think that they, they, will, they will understand. And we can advise them in advance that we can make our presentation. If we have the books, great. If not, we can make the presentation with the books to follow, and, or we can schedule a special meeting when the books are available and present it at that time, and we can let them choose. Ms. Healy. Yes. Since it, is, it appears you all are having a meeting tomorrow um, with yes. your sure, parts, sure. I'm sure this would be a great Oh, it's already on my my unwritten uh, agenda. <laughs> Ms. Healy, also, could, if I could just let everybody know, all of um, Mr. Fulmer's backup to the changes that were made are now on the agenda item, so you can find them all and review them uh, at your leisure. <laughs> all right, so, so it sounds like we're going to have a special call meeting Monday at 5 o'clock, schedule 5 to 6 to address the uh, approval of the budget. Okay. And then you can let us know at that time, you know, where we are on the books. If you, and, and, and specifically, um, we want to add security um, funding in there. And if you have some proposals, Dr. Benson, as I said, you know, by the end of the week, um, I know that that's really short time and we recognize this is just gonna be preliminary. But some, th you know, things that we could plan on for for the next year. But we will have to have the caveat that this is subject to uh, to change when we do do more in depth review, and and hopefully work with the community on coming out with some great ideas. <coughs> so thank you, Mr. Fulmer. Get some rest tonight. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. That brings us to 9.03.
Oh, 9.02, I'm moving right along here. Approve the award of contract to Motorola Solutions of Lithicum Heights, Maryland in the amount of $1,639,000 using carry forward funds for the procurement and installation of a new radio system in support of transportation services. These carry forward funds were funds that we had left from last year that we have uh, approved going forward to the Board of Supervisors to ask for the funding um, to use for these um, these radios. So if we, uh, if we, when we approve this, we will be able to award the contract, correct? Yes. So um, the sooner we approve this, the sooner we can get those radios, you know, into the buses. So I, I think there is a, a an interest uh, on, on the part of uh, Dr. Benson to uh, have this move to action if the board would entertain that this evening. Yes, um, Ms. Egan. Um, just for a matter of clarification, um, I don't, I'm not sure you got the memo about refreshing your screen. Oh. It's actually um, um, item 10.02. Oh, no. Sorry. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a paper, paper. girl. <laughs> In that vein, that. I would, uh, I would still, ask still, school. it's still one million six hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars, right? Okay, <laughs> got it. I would ask, ask that the board consider moving to action ten point oh two. All right. Second. Second. All right. So we have. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, we, we'll. I'll withdraw it if you need it. Well, we can, um, we can still have the discussion after it's moved to action. Is your question? Yeah, no, yeah it's just for Scott. I'm okay. going to send you an Sorry. email. Okay. Um, I, well, I just wanted to know if there were other vendors considered. Are these state vendors that um, you, you chose this uh, company from? Please. Would you like me to wait and respond? No, the, no, just her? respond. Yeah, that's a, that's an easy question. Yes, ma'am. Give, um, give us the In example. the agenda item, it articulates the history of the procurement process that Stafford County government um, uh, initiated in 2007. Um, there was an RFP put out, um, you know, that was advertised that they selected Motorola. Um, it was a five-year contract. It was renewed in 2012. Um, three years later, the county government, along with the county attorney, decided a formal, specific, sole source justification was required with Motorola. And so that's the particular agreement that we are writing off in the procurement process. Okay. Good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, this is your joke, not mine. Um, I thought you had it on a napkin somewhere. <laughs> Back of the napkin. Okay, and Mr. Horan, the reason we use these sole source contracts is because it's the, in the best economic interest of the school system, is it not? It is, and also the county government EMS pro, uh, system is we are um, buying a system that ties directly into that system radios and so um, it's sole sourced so that we can piggyback on the existing system that's uh, been heavily invested by the county okay thank you um, let's let's vote on that motion to, to move this to action at this time um, all in favor of the motion to move it to action please say aye. aye aye all opposed all right now it's on the agenda for action do we have a motion motion to approve 10.02 second. second okay motion by Ms. Hazard second by Mr. Cater any discussion no? All in favor of the motion to approve 10.02 to mm -hmm. purchase the radios, um, please say aye. 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 All in favor, aye. motion carries unanimously. All right, that brings us to 10.03. Adopt a resolution authorizing an application to the Virginia Public School Authority for the sale of bonds in amount not to exceed $9,875,000 <coughs> with objective of providing net proceeds of $9,405,000 for the spring pool. Does anyone have any questions about this? These funds are primarily for Moncure, the elementary school rebuild, and the amount of $8,390,000, and the remaining $1,015,000 is for interior finishes at A.G. Wright Middle School and Garrisonville Elementary School. These were uh, approved at prior school board meetings, mm -hmm. and what this um, request is, is to allow us to um, borrow the money to pay for it. In order to get this VSPA, um, VPSA um, bond sale, we have to approve this motion and then it has to go to the supervisors and they have to hold a public hearing to authorize us to, uh, to borrow the money. So it's not a one-stop shopping here, it's we're one step along the way 
And when is this um, this bond sale? Do we have a date for it, Mr. Fulmer? It is um, for the spring sale. It's usually in May. In May. Yeah, and um, we have time to um, go information and action as okay. long as it goes action that um, our next meeting. Okay, that's for when great. this is due. Thanks. All right, so 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 you're not asking us to move this up. No, ma'am. Okay. Wow. Perfect. Any any questions on this one? No, this will come back to us for action at the no, next it's, meeting. No, it's on and, and it's on school site 2018 capital maintenance, so it's top of the list. Okay. All right. Um, 10.04, approve the superintendent's proposed tuition fees in accordance with policy 5703, tuition fees for non-resident students. Uh, this has been uh, brought to us previously by Dr. Benson to approve a policy to allow charging these fees. This is not a charge for any uh, resident of Stafford County, nor is it a charge for someone who takes in a foster child who is placed in Stafford County. This is a charge for the agency that's out of state that is ch placing a student in Stafford County Public Schools. And the materials here very clearly state that the Commonwealth of Virginia is not going to fund a child who is placed by an outside agency. So that, uh, that average daily, um, what is it, membership count? will not include these students. So what the proposal um, from Dr. Benson here is, is to charge the, the amount of money that we calculate it costs Stafford County Public Schools to educate you know, a, a student. And it would be prorated based on the period of time that they're actually in the school system. Now, one thing that's very important is that Dr. Benson did some research and confirmed that these fees would not be assessed for non-resident students placed under an adoption agreement. So if a family wanted to adopt a child who was in a foster system out of state, that child could come in if there's a, an adoption agreement with the family, then that agency would not be charged. And the, the, the reason for that is that we don't want to discourage placement prior to the adoption, if, if, if that's the intention. Yes. Uh, will this change yearly because of the um, basic rate per pupil? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and what, what, so the, what the item says, on, yeah, okay. no, is that in August of 2018, and I'm assuming every August thereafter, the superintendent okay. will bring forward a recommendation for the next budget year. Okay. Because it's going to be based on our cost to educate a student in Stafford County Public Schools. And you'll see here that in addition to the general education costs, there is a proposed charge for a paraprofessional, nurse, physical therapy, speech, and gifted. And those charges are allowable under the state law. So what we're saying is if, if an outside agency, outside of the Commonwealth of Virginia, places a student in Stafford County Public Schools, and it costs us you know, more to educate that student, then they're, not only are they going to be charged the base rate, but they're going to be charged the additional rate as well. Now, we're going to be, we're going to be bound to what we approve here. But these are the superintendent's, um, you know, estimated cost. Correct, Dr. Benson? That, that's correct, Madam Chair. And Sorry for explaining no, this. You but did, I, you I did think a great this job. is a really important issue, one, one, and it's confusing. So, one, one more item. I don't see transportation in here. Well, we don't. We don't have a separate charge for transportation. In fact, we can't charge for transportation, mm -hmm. as we found out many years ago, because okay. the school board voted to charge a, a transportation fee. Madam, Madam Chair, the, our transportation costs are rolled up in our cost per pupil. Yeah. Well, it's, it's but it can't be a separate. For the record, I will say I was the only school board member who voted against that transportation fee because I didn't think it was legal. And gosh, guess what? The state told us it wasn't legal. <laughs> but anyway, that's an aside. That, that was before, oh before the start of history. Um, all right, so any questions about this item? Yes. Madam Chair. We, lo we love Dinosaurs we, were here back we then. Do, we love you, Trish. I know. You, you know, I'm just. I love you, I'm Trish. Just, I shouldn't speak for self. I'm I love you, Trish. I'm a senior member here. I, <laughs> Madam Chair, I do have one question. That's <laughs> okay. I get special parking spaces, right? <laughs> Everybody's ready it's to roll, too right? Late. I know. It is rolling. Madam Chair, I just have one question. Is this. Um, something n not regarding this particular part for non-resident students, but do we use these um, 
calculations for any other um, non-resident students that come for other services. You don't have to answer that this evening. I'm thinking specifically Alt-Ed, just for a longer term discussion. Not for tonight, but just would like the, to please ask. The, these are for out of, out of uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. If someone's placed in our schools by an outside state agency. Okay, I, but I'm, it's really going towards the um, listing of fees in the future, okay. because we do have non-residents who attend. It's not for tonight's I see discussion. What, I see what you're Maybe saying. Maybe Dr. Okay. Benson yeah. can put that in his uh, newsletter. I, and it's not for t no. That's okay. I can answer quickly. Okay. Um, we do charge a, a fee for alt ed students. It's not that per pupil fee. I don't have it offhand. <coughs> it's um, just something I think we should examine. Must be. Yeah. Sure. There is aware. a there is a rate that's currently <coughs> charged. Yeah, which has and been I declining. It has not been changed in 20 years, which I believe Perhaps. we may want to consider changing. Okay. okay, it's just a broad All right, session. the next meeting of the school board, and I will update this on my own because it's not <laughs> updated there, on my paper will be Monday, March, is it 5th? At 5 o'clock p.m. I didn't 5th. refresh, so. All right. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you all for uh, tolerating me. I'm sorry. We're not done? Well, we are, but we're we're done. We, received, <laughs> we received an email that the Dare basketball game has been moved to March 16th. Oh. Oh, oh that's important. That was my request. They needed a center.